Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And if you guys are interested in playing with a different flavor of Linux for your Raspberry Pi, well, that's what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be installing Arch Linux on Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So there's really no right or wrong way to install Arch Linux on any computer. Uh, it's all user preference. So basically, I'm going to walk you through the steps of what I do to install Arch Linux on my Raspberry Pi. Now, to begin, you're going to need a Linux computer. Now, you can actually use this on a Raspberry Pi, but for me, I'm going to be doing this on my laptop because I got an SD card reader and just much easier. The Linux computer that I'm using right now is Elementary OS. It's actually a very pretty Debian-based operating system. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link for Elementary OS if you want to download it and install it on your computer or laptop. So the first thing you want to do is locate your SD card. So for me, I have a 16 gigabyte SD card. And I'm going to do LSBLK. So basically, that list of blocks of what you got. Now, to begin, we're going to do sudo fdisk dev.sdb. Now, these are these commands are exactly the same on Raspberry Pi. This is basically a dis, uh, Debian distribution anyway. If you guys get lost, actually enable closed captioning. Closed captioning. I actually write out all the commands on closed captioning. So if that helps a bit. Now that we're in fdisk. We're going to do O. Then we do N for new, D for primary, 1, the beginning block. Here we have to do the plus sign 100 megabytes. And then we're going to change this file type to MS to FAT32. Now we're going to create the second partition. So we're going to do the same thing, N, P, 2 as default the beginning size, and we're just going to use the rest of the space. So it's going to be 14.4 gigabytes. Once you're done with that, hit W to write. And once that's all finished, next step is to make our file system. So sudo make fs dot vfat slash dev sd sdb1. Don't type in the wrong one. That will change our 100 megabyte to a fat32 fat file system. sudo make fs dot ext4 dev.sdb2. Now we have a Linux file system on our sdb2. So proceed anyway. Yes. Yes. We're just going to enter through that. I'll take like a minute, maybe less. Okay. Now that it's done, we're going to do make dir. Well, sorry. sudo make dir. And we're going to make it in mount. And we're going to call the first one boot. And sudo make dir mount. And we're going to call that one root. Now we're going to mount our file system. So it's going to be sudo mount dev sdb1 to mnt slash boot and sudo mount dev sdb1, I mean 2, to mnt slash root. All right now that we mounted our file system, we're going to have to download Arch Linux. So let me move to our, my download directory. We're going to do wget http arch linux arm.org slash capital arch capital linux capital arm arm rpi to latest dash tar dot gz. Okay, I must have had a typo somewhere because my keyboard doesn't like to. It's going to be wget http arch linux arm.org slash os see i forgot that capital arch capital linux capital arm dash rpi dash two dash latest dot tar dot gz all right now that we downloaded everything it's about 300 megabytes or so um we're gonna have to go right into super user mode so sudo su now from here since i'm still in my download directory where i downloaded everything what i'm going to do is extract everything to the root partition that we created so it's going to be tar xzvf um, arch linux pi to latest tar dash c mnt root Now that that's done, we're going to move the boot folder to the boot partition. So, mv mnt 
root boot to mnt slash boot. Okay, now that everything's moved over, we're gonna sync. All right, now that everything's all synced up, um, one of the things that I need to modify uh, because I have overscan issues on my thing, so I gotta disable it. So before I eject the disk, I would just go nano mnt boot config.txt and I'm gonna add disable overscan equals one. Now I can unmount everything, so you mount mnt boot and you mount mnt root. Now let's go over to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so now we boot it into our alarm or Arch Linux arm. And to begin, you're gonna have actually two users. One is called root and the other one is called alarm. So before anything, we're gonna log into our root user account, which is root, and the password is root. Okay, a couple of things we need to set up. Well, the first thing we need to set up is internet connectivity. Now, if you have a ethernet device or a wire connected to it, you probably don't need to worry about the step. You could just do IP ADDR and see if you have an address. Now for us, I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, hook up the Wi-Fi before anything else. Now we have to create a file called WPA supplicant. So we're gonna head over and navigate to CD ETC WPA supplicant. Oops. So I'm gonna create a new file called nano home network. So here I'm gonna do network equals parentheses, no, not parentheses, I forgot what that's called. Uh, SSID equals Friday or whatever your network name is. And then PSK equals whatever the password is. And then you close that and you're all set. Actually, I believe SSID needs to be in, squig uh, in quotes too. So to test this out, we would do WPA supplicant then dash I for interface WLAN 0 dash C for configuration file etc WPA and then I called it home network and then we want to do that little and key just so I could run the software in the background and you don't have to worry about it now that we got our Wi-Fi up, the next thing we need to do is to get a DHCP address. And to do that, we would have to do DHCP CD WLAN 0. And once it grabs an IP address, just give it a second, it'll kick you out back into a terminal. You're going to notice that all the IP addresses are flooding in. You could ping google.com and you should get a response. All right, now that we got our internet up, we're gonna have to initiate our Pac-Man. Now, Arch Linux is actually really known for their package manager. Not only it's a different type of Linux and everything, but their package manager is really good, actually. And it's called Pac-Man. So we're gonna have to initiate that call. So we're gonna do pacman-key initiate. It might take a few minutes, maybe. I don't, I don't remember being a few minutes, but it might take a few sec seconds oh there you go okay so su uh pack so used to sudo man let's do an upgrade so we're going to download the latest repositories and all that stuff and then we're going to do an upgrade to the operating system right off the bat now another thing about arch linux is that it is a rolling distro so i'm going to hit yes on this and what i mean by rolling distro there's no arch 1.0 Arch Linux 2.0 or something like that. It's basically just Arch Linux and it gets updated throughout. So it's called a rolling Linux or rolling update, you could say. So anytime you do that command that I just showed you, pacman capital S Y U, it's gonna update your system to the latest version of Arch Linux. All right, guys, now that we are back from the update, uh, the next thing we're gonna install is actually sudo, so that way we could use our regular user with super user privileges. So it's gonna be pack man-s sudo and screen, because I like to use screen, but I'm, I'm installing that anyway. 
Okay, so first thing we need to do is actually give our alarm user privileges. So let's go over to um, etc sudo or fo uh, folder, I believe. And we'll make a file. Do I have nano? I think, I hope I do. My overrides. And we're going to do alarm all equals, since this is running off my Raspberry Pi, I'm just going to do no password all. Save that, and let's give that a try. So I could do sudo, well, uh, switch user to alarm, and I could do sudo pacman, and we're going to install packer. Let's see if that works. There you go. Gave me super user, user privileges. And because I am a fan of Nano, I'm, I do use VI, but I prefer Nano. It's just much easier for me. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually change my editor on Packer. So I'm going to do uh, sudo nano e user. Sorry, I got so used to using etc user bin Packer. And here I'm going to search for something called editor and I'm going to hit control W again hit it again and you see how editor says VI right here basically we just want to change this to nano so it will come up in nano when I'm done all right now here we are actually going to be installing our desktop so sudo pacman dash x x org dash server xf86 dash video dash fb dev x org dash x refresh okay i'm just going to leave everything as default yes and it's going to install All right, now that xorg server is installed, we get to choose our desktop environment now. So for me, I'm actually going to be installing XFCE4. So I'm going to do sudo pacman-s -S, um, xfce4, then xfce4 goodies, if I could spell, and xarchive. For those um, you know archives so I'm just gonna leave everything as default okay if I could spell actually we'll install that later All right, now that we have our XFCE4 installed, uh, we're gonna have to install a desktop session manager, basically. So we're gonna use pacman, oh, forgot sudo, sudo pacman-s, and we're gonna install sddm. All right, now we have to install, basically, uh, example configuration. So what we're gonna be doing is sudo-sh-c, oops, not dash, sh-c, s, ddm example config oh man i forgot a space over here carrot etc sddm.config close quote so now that's that's done uh, we're going to use packer and install a theme arch linux themes sddm now, what a SDDM is, basically, it gives you that login prompt to log into your desktop itself. So that's what the SDDM stands for. Okay, now that we have our SSD, SDDM installed, our SSD, uh, this, um, desktop manager, now that we have our, so now that we have our desktop manager installed, we're going to have to enable it. So we do sudo systemctl enable SDDM. That's going to put on the configurations to enable it. And the next thing is sudo. Now we're going to start it basically. System CTL start SDDM. 
Okay, here we have it. And the password to your user alarm is alarm. Since this is your first time logging into XFCE 4, I'm just going to use the default configuration. We'll change out all of that later. Okay, before I reboot the system, just so I have a fresh start, um, we're going to have to get our network going so we don't have to keep typing in our whole network string with the WPA and stuff like that. So I'm going to go right into a terminal. started one too many oops and basically here I am gonna do sudo pack man s network manager uh, and the network manager applet oh I forgot dash or oh, that spell wrong net work man I did spell it wrong. Hit yes, let that install. Okay, now we have to start it using that command that we did earlier, which is sudo systemctl enable network manager. That way it could take over. Oh, it's a typo because it's case sensitive. Okay, now we could do sudo systemctl start network manager. All right, now that we have all that configured, we're going to reboot the system just for a fresh start and see if our Wi Fi is working at this point. Okay, now that we have our session manager up, you see this little new icon, and we're going to edit a connection. Add Wi Fi, create. And here it's going to be your SSID and the Wi Fi security. Name the connection, whatever you want. Save, close. And then now it's going to automatically establish the connection since it's already saved into a system. All right, from here on, it's basically more configurations um, and stuff like that. So what I'm going to be doing right now is actually getting the Bluetooth working. And then we're going to customize everything else, uh, which is the themes and all that stuff, just to make it look like more of a Raspberry Pi setting. Okay, now it's time to install our Bluetooth. So what we're going to do now is actually type this whole command in, which is sudo pacman-s make gcc git core auto make auto config pkg config lib tools bin utilities and patch. So I already have everything installed, but I'm just going to go through the whole motion. Okay, now that everything's installed, um, now we're going to go ahead and install the Bluetooth uh, for Raspberry Pi. Now, what you want to do is packer yo -ert, and blue man. OK, 
Okay. Now we're gonna install while well, using our new um, software that we just installed, which is Yoert, and do S Pi Bluetooth. All right. Once that's done, we can enable our Bluetooth, which is sudo system ctl enable Bluetooth dot service. And we could do the same. We'll just hit the up arrow and we can start it. Now let's get our audio working. So we're going to do sudo pacman dash s pulse audio elsa pulse audio bluetooth pav you control blues blues dot libs blues dot utils blues dash firmware and we're gonna let all that install that should give you the speaker icon and everything that you need to control your bluetooth with now let's enable our audio so we're gonna do sudo nano boot config and add a new line under here called dt param equal audio equal on so now we could do sudo reboot all right now let's add the icons into our And we'll move this icon to where we want to be. All right. Now that we have our audio, uh, we're kind of we're gonna need a web browser just to get the rest of the customization going. So I'm gonna again, and everything is through Pacman. So Pacman Chromium. Well, if you want to use Firefox, you could install Firefox on here too. I'm just gonna leave everything as default. Okay, not to mention now that we got everything all set up from this step on basically it's all customization so this is how i would build my the look of everything i want on my uh, xfce so first i'm going to install packer arc gtk theme uh, i'm a big fan of this theme While we're waiting for that to install, I'm also gonna open up my Chrome browser. Uh, now I have a selection to say Chrome. I could actually go over to settings, setting manager. Uh, I think it's appearance, I believe. And now I could change to arc theme see that top looks pretty cool and uh, let's change this a little bit more towards let's do icon 8 raspberry pi let's add some fonts so packer dash s ttf uh robodo i like that font so this is the Raspberry Pi PNG 50 pixels. Let's download this. Okay. So let's change this icon while we're waiting for everything. Yes, this is multitasking. Uh, let's search for an icon. I think I could go scroll to the top. You know what? Here, image files. And we're going to go down to alarm, the user alarm, downloads, and that's going to be our Raspberry Pi icon. So now I can change this over to menu. That looks pretty cool up there now. And I'm going to close that. 
and now that I got these new fonts, I go to settings, setting manager, appearance, fonts, and I could change this over to Roberto. It looks pretty cool. Not the thin one, maybe the regular one. There you go. Look at that, the fonts look much better now. Close. Yep, the fonts look a lot better. You can also uh, find a pretty cool wallpaper. What I've been big on recently, if you notice, is the hexagon thing. I don't know why, so I'm just going to hexagon. So this is how my desktop would look like. Um, you could always configure it the way you wanted to. You might not necessarily want these icons. You might want the recycling bin. It's all up to you what you guys want to do, but that's how the basic installation of Arch Linux is. So if you guys have any questions, hit up in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you guys enjoy videos like this, please hit that little subscribe button. And if you don't know what to watch, you can click these little images left and right of you to see what the previous video is and what YouTube tells you to watch. So as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.